No one deserves greater respect and commendation this year than the medical workers and public health officials who fought COVID-19 from the front lines. We always have the image of the initial stages of the pandemic when medical professionals were wearing heavy hazmat suits and bandages across their faces, drenched in sweat as the pandemic consumed them physically, socially and emotionally as they tended to thousands of people. Meanwhile, public health officials have been under strong pressure like no other as the whole nation looks to them for reassurance, guidance and prompt action as the virus continues to tear through societies. With the vaccine starting to be administered in some countries, we hope that the situation will get better very soon, although it does seem that the virus is spreading faster than ever before. Today, we connect with two medical professionals who have been fighting the pandemic all throughout the year. We're joined by Alison Berner, emergency department nurse at Centura Health Parker Adventist Hospital in the US, and Dr Bonnie Henry, provincial health officer for the province of British Columbia in Canada. Really good morning, good afternoon to you ladies and well thank you so much for joining us on this show. We're going to go straight into the questions now and well let's start with you Bonnie. Now we're seeing a very serious case of new COVID-19 cases hit record numbers day after day these days and we're hearing that the ICU capacity in the states especially it's being strongly tested. What is the situation like for you right now and how are you and your colleagues dealing with it? Yeah, so this this has been part of the most challenging time as cases have increased across Canada. Here in British Columbia, we've leveled off again in our second wave, but it's still a very difficult time and we are very excited to be having vaccine coming. Uh, we've just started this week um, and that will make all the difference in the world, but it is very much a challenge. Our hospitals are stretched, um, but we are in a pretty good place here in British Columbia. In some parts of Canada, we are having challenges in, in meeting the demand for sure. Right, sorry, I just said the states that I'm in Canada, but well. Now, Alison, it's also been very, it's been very trying times for you in the states as well. I mean, what was, what was it like when the virus first hit uh, America and how did, when did you have to first respond to the virus in the states? Well, it's, it's kind of all a blur right now, honestly, but I, March was about the first time that we really felt something um, when we went on lockdown and it was it was pretty full force here for us. Um, we uh, it was quite terrifying at the beginning because there was a lot of unknowns and we didn't really know what to expect. Um, but now uh, with the second wave, we kind of have our groove going and capacity is limited for sure. Um, but it feels like, you know, we kind of know what's going on now and we kind of know what to expect. And so um, it's a little different than the first time around, but it's still very terrifying and it's a very real disease here in Colorado and in America. That is really quite heartbreaking to hear that you're used to this, that you've grown used to this kind of uh, tragedy day after day now. I mean, it still it must still be very hard. And uh, the same goes for you, Bonnie. I mean, many people around the world, they, they were really moved by your very empathic yet very measured response to the pandemic and well most notably when you announced the outbreak at a care center for the elderly i mean at moments like those how was it for you having to always keep your keep your composure in public i mean throughout all these months and well really how did you deal with this kind of pressure and the spiraling situation just emotionally it has been a very challenging time and and i have had the the privilege and the challenge of being the face of the public health response here in British Columbia. And um, I, I was involved with the SARS outbreak in Toronto in 2003. So had a good sense of how this might affect people and affect long-term care. And when we had that first outbreak in our long-term care home, it just, it just struck me so much that this was going to be a long, hard road. Even then, I don't think I realized it was going to be quite this long and this hard. Um, but, uh, you know, these are, these are part of the challenges, recognizing that we are human and that we are all suffering. And if we can give people the means and the, the, what, the knowledge to do the things that keep them safe, that that's how we all protect each other. So part of my job in communication is telling people what those things are, giving them the means to do it, and supporting people and being able to do that. 
Um, Bonnie, well, you, we know you've documented this and um, you'll be releasing a book next year, which we're very, very much looking forward to. But just to give us a spoiler, I suppose, um, well, what was the most trying time for you throughout this whole COVID-19 pandemic? I'm sure there were many dif difficult moments, but which was perhaps the most challenging time for you that just sticks in, in your memory? When I, when I think back to it, and uh, the book talks about the, the period of time that uh, uh, um, Ms. Berner was talking about where there, we didn't know anything. We had a lot of uncertainty. There were a lot of changes happening very quickly, and we needed to make decisions very quickly. And that was the time when uh, I came up with a phrase that I use about being kind and how important it was for to us as a, as a community to support each other. and. Kindness is recognizing with compassion of another person's story and being calm so that we could take the action that we needed to and how that would keep us safe. But I have to say, you know, in this whole year, the hardest time for me personally, and I think for a lot of people, is this, this past few weeks and going into the holidays and knowing that there's an end in sight, but what, that we're not there yet and we still have to take these measures um, to stop transmission in our community. Well, that really does sound I mean, frustrating. I mean, just to be able to see the end, but not knowing how or, or when we'll get to it, really. But, well, Alison, now, how did the, um, what were the most challenging times for you? I mean, how did the pandemic really sort of affect your personal life as well? Did you have to really restrict yourself from seeing a lot of family members and friends throughout this pandemic? Absolutely. Um, at the beginning, everyone was extremely scared. I was extremely scared to bring this home to my family. Um, we all didn't really know, you know, even how it was transmitted. Could we be carriers and be asymptomatic and coming home and exposing our family? And I have two little kids and a husband and I have a huge family that actually lives here in Colorado and we see each other all the time. And my parents are in their 60s and they have some comorbidities and so they were at higher risk than some people. And it was it was quite scary. Um, the hardest thing for me has been not seeing my family. You feel extremely isolated as an emergency room nurse dealing with this pandemic. And then you come home and you feel isolated. Um, a lot of venting and going through the day was spent with coworkers after work, you know, re going through our day and talking about everything that we see. And we can't do that anymore because of social distancing guidelines that we're all following and trying to protect everyone that we can. Um, what we're seeing every day in the hospital is horrifying and something that you know we'll never forget um that's also been extremely difficult as a nurse is having few people die alone um you know death is something that no one wants to ever deal with or go through and it's something that we all have to go through but when you don't have family members at the bedside of a dying patient it's extremely difficult and when you're setting up a zoom call or a facetime for someone to say their last words to a family member it's something you will never forget that really must be very, it must have affected you so much, just seeing patients get worse, basically, and not recover, I suppose, under the watch of your hospital. And, oh, and you can't even go home to unload this with on your family members right. and distress. Mm -hmm. I mean, it must have been terribly difficult just being separated from your two children as well. I just can't imagine yes. what that must have been. And we're very sorry. And. Well, hopefully Thank this you. will end very soon. But well, we are so, so grateful for workers like you, obviously, just going through all this trauma yourself, but having to tend to others. And well, Bonnie, you've um, in the past, you've uh, helped other countries respond to epidemics as well, um, to the Ebola crisis and SARS as well. But how has this COVID-19 situation been different from the times you fought previous outbreaks of disease? You know, I think uh, one of the big differences is that it's, it's happened globally. It's affected everybody around the world. So there's no place to turn to for help, if you will. And uh, it, it really um, it, it means that all of us have to be in this together and work together. And some of the challenges that have been most distressing have been around some countries who've uh, not been able to handle things or have... Um, not allowed goods and services to move across borders and, and how people have suffered because of that. And that is uh, probably the, the thing that we see the most that is uh, more challenging about this and the fact that it's gone on so long. But then 
I think of all the positives too, the adaptability and the resilience that we see in our communities and our children, especially young people who have been so affected by this. But we also see a, a global togetherness that has enabled us to put uh, vaccines together in such a record period of time. So uh, there's lots that are still, um, we're still suffering in many ways because of this, and it has exposed many of the inequity in our society that we need to think about um, building back better and more just. And we've heard very encouraging news that uh, Canada will be uh, rolling out the vaccinations in the coming weeks. And uh, well, how are you planning to go about doing that in British Columbia? And uh, well, first of all, you know, you, you told us that um, you got the vaccine yourself. I mean, what was that like? I just received it today. So we started our vaccine, our immunization program last week, thankfully, with uh, the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. And uh, um, obviously, people are concerned. And uh, as a show of solidarity and the fact that I, I believe this is safe and effective vaccine, I received mine this morning. It's a, it's a very small dose. So um, I'm perfectly fine, barely felt it. <laughs> so uh, I'm just very happy that uh, we're focusing on long-term care homes and uh, elder residents in long-term care, as we know that that's been such a tragedy in, in our country. And we're, we're rolling it out as well to healthcare workers as, um, as a start. And it's so important for our public health officials, our leaders, to uh, show us that the vaccine is perfectly safe because there are so many, uh, there's so much suspicion around them these days, think um, around the efficacy and just the amount of time, the, the very rapid amount of time that it took to develop them. But of course, we know that scientists have been working, the top scientists in the world have been working on them and, um, you know, they wouldn't have really, uh, really, um, they wouldn't have just, had these vaccinations without knowing that they are safe and well Bonnie um, sorry Alison you've had your uh, vaccination shot as well and uh, what was the experience like for you um, how are you feeling right now um, it was very emotional this is something that we've all been really looking forward to and is the beginning of an end for us it's the light at the end of the tunnel um, I had no uh, symptoms or side effects from the vaccine myself um, other than just kind of a sore arm um, which is typical for pretty much any vaccine I've ever received that I can remember in my life. So um, I feel great and I cannot wait until January 8th. I'm counting down the days to get my second dose. I'm so excited. And we're so excited for you. It's just such encouraging news. And just knowing that our frontline workers and just you being the, uh, among the most vulnerable people to this pandemic, that you are getting this uh, vaccination uh, first. And that is so necessary, of course. And. Now, Bonnie, some leaders around the world, they've been criticized for misleading the public with mixed messages about the pandemic. What do you think in going forward as the world deals with second, third and perhaps even fourth waves? What do you think is the most important aspect of uh, communication with the public in these times? You know, I, I really believe that um, giving people the information they need to make their own assessments of things. And we went out very early with modeling and data and putting it all out there. And everybody's become an epidemiologist, I think, around the world these days. But it is important for people to know what what it is that we're making decisions on, to be transparent, to be open and to be uh, truthful about everything, to understand that when people are in a crisis, um, that it can it can stimulate certain behaviors. Some people become very anxious. Some people become angry, and we need to give people the means to to uh, stimulate that altruism, that support for each other, that togetherness. And we do that by being open with people and transparent about the information that we're seeing. And and right now, I think we all need that support from each other because we need to continue cleaning our hands. We need to continue wearing masks. We need to continue keeping our distance and staying away from others when we're sick because that will keep us um, through these next few weeks and months until everybody can get vaccinated. Well, we need to continue taking these precautionary steps. It's so essential, not just for ourselves, but also for our medical workers who are just fighting this virus every single day through blood, sweat and tears. And Alison, how do you think members of the public could really show that appreciation to medical workers in going forward? You know, the biggest thing for us is just wear a mask, wash your hands, stay six feet apart, you know, social distance. I know the holidays are coming up and I know it's going to be an extremely hard time for a lot of people, 
to not be around their loved ones and the people that they love. But it is something that is so important to actually do and to just have the holidays with people in your own household. Um, because next Christmas, um, you want your whole family to be there. You don't want to not have a loved one because something as simple as, you know, one of your family members traveling and then coming back and getting someone sick with COVID and then dying from it. Um, many Christmases to come with family and you want, you want that. And so if we can social distance, wash our hands, stay six feet apart and just continue to support each other that way, that's the most important thing. Um, it's, it's hard to watch people posting pictures on social media and, and all over the internet of the parties and barbecues and, and stuff that they've been doing through this pandemic. It's, it's something that is a super spreader and it spreads so fast through people and they don't even understand it. Um, so I think that's the easiest and best way to support us healthcare workers and frontliners is to just follow the rules, wash your hands, social distance and wear a mask. And amid these seasonal um, festivities, a time of family, we need to remember that our medical workers have been sacrificing not just their lives, but their families' lives as well, all throughout the year. And this pandemic is mm -hmm. ongoing. So hopefully we as the pub members of the public all over the world will remember that and just have that thought for, have that heart for our medical workers who have been saving so many lives and continue to do so, just sacrificing everything in their lives right now. Well. I'm afraid this yeah, is where absolutely. we're going to have to uh, end our discussion today. But thank you both so much for just sparing us this time that you could actually be resting and just sharing with us what you've been going through this year. It's been horrible for you and we're so sorry about that. But we hope that things will get better and still that you will have a very Merry Christmas. That was Alison Berner, thank you. Emergency thank Department you. Nurse at Centura Health Parker Adventist hospital in the US and Dr. Bonnie Henry, provincial health officer for the province of British Columbia in Canada. Again, thank you both so much for joining us. Stay safe. Thank you. And to our viewers, thank you as always for watching and have a very Merry Christmas.